Then I came according to an invitation of you guys, and uh, today I'll tell you about a prison system in Belarus, and also uh, go through such um, questions as prison casts, as uh, stages of convict's life in Belarus. Yes, uh, I spent five years uh, in prison, uh, was set free about a year ago. Uh, maybe all of you heard about so-called case so-called case of anarchists in uh, Belarus, where three of us uh, were uh, sentenced to uh, quite big uh, prison terms, from three to eight years, and all of us were liberated at uh, 22nd of August uh, in the previous year. And uh, also here in Warsaw, the, there were lots of actions of solidarity, thanks to everyone who participated, and so on. Yeah, now I'll share with you uh, my experience and tell you how uh, the prison system in Belarus uh, is organized. Uh, when you are arrested in Belarus, the first place uh, where, you, where you go after talk with uh, your investigator, uh, after suing you, uh, is so-called temporary detention facility. Uh, so sorry for this slide, they're not perfect because we had technical problems. So, uh, you cannot see another picture, but temporary uh, detention facility is actually a rather small cell, usually for two or three, between two and eight uh, people. And you stay here in a status as uh, charged. So, investigation and cops have not collected enough proofs against you uh, to make you a convict. Uh, you are just charged. The main uh, characteristic of this place and of your existence of this, in this place is that you always are under the constant pressure of investigators. So they ask you all the time, they sue you, and they also try to affect on you uh, by your cellmates. So they put pressure on you, uh, practice of beating is also uh, quite popular in Belarusian institutions. Uh, yes, and you are all the time under high psychological pressure. Uh, officially you can stay in temporary detention facility up to 10 days. Uh, the next place where you go is uh, investigation facility. Uh, so you stay here officially in a status of uh, accused. Uh, and you stay there until the trial, uh, trial happens. Uh, the very important feature of this place is, uh, is, it, is that this is the first place where you get acquainted with a prison hierarchy, informal prison hierarchy. It is a cell system. Uh, usually it is a cell which is highly overcrowded. Uh, it's quite usual uh, when in the cell which is uh, made for 12 people, for example, uh, you'll meet 24 people and uh, officially you can stay uh, in investigation facility up to two years but investigations, uh, investigators and cops, detectives have lots of um, tools, like legal tools for prolonging your stay, your stay here and it is not a big surprise to meet a person who stays here for more than uh, for not more than for five years. Uh, the, I knew this uh, such a such a person uh, was in the investigation facility when I was here at the same time. At the same time. So uh, and while I mentioned informal prison hierarchy, I need to make a little to tell a little story about it, go, go a bit away from my uh, central story and uh, tell you about this informal hierarchy. So this is a very complex phenomenon, it's a highly institutionalized uh, informal set of rules which, is, which stems actually from uh, times of Gulag, from Stalin times, uh, from Stalin concentration camps. Uh, and it's based on a very strong hierarchy, on obedience, 
and on a strict division of all the convicts by the castes. So, here is the uh, graphic. Uh, on the top of the hierarchy of this hierarchical pyramid uh, is two types of castes. The first one is so-called botnia. Uh, you can call them mafia leaders or criminal leaders. And in the same time, uh, so-called kazli, which is translated like gods, uh, inmates uh, who are inmates appointed by administration. So this uh, hierarchy is more uh, suitable to a, a camp where a convict um, serves his prison term. And I'll speak about it a bit later. But it also works in investigation facility. So in any place where convicts spend lots of time, uh, is it investigation facility or uh, penal colony, you see this uh, here he formed. Uh, so mafia leaders are usually informal criminal leaders who never worked uh, in the usual life, who live, uh, who like um, gain the uh, goods for living by uh, criminal activity. Uh, they are obliged not to work at all. And usually these are people, they are drug addicts also, uh, and they live, they build, construct all their uh, living according to prison hierarchy and prison uh, rules, informal prison rules. Yeah, they are quite brutal persons, usually uh, highly authoritarian minds and so on. And what about Kazli? They are inmates usually sentenced to a very big prison terms. Uh, very often they are rapists or cruel uh, murderers. Uh, and while they have, while their prison terms are very long, they have to survive some uh, somehow. Uh, hence, they try to. Uh, stay in good relations with prison administration and to serve it. So they are officially appointed on some uh, colony offices by prison administration and they have some shared power in a penal colony. It looks like administration of penal colony shares uh, its own responsibilities uh, and its own offices with another inmates which helps uh, administration to maintain, maintain control. Because in any colony you have, for example, 1,000 of inmates and only 40 or 50 uh, administration uh, officers. And of course it's not enough to maintain control. You need to form some uh, type of uh, informal hierarchy to prevent uh, things, some uh, riots, for example, from happening to prevent uh, unexpected behavior of uh, other inmates. Depending on colony, uh, administration can um, form the relations with Botnia and make them rule the colony, or with Kazli, like push their own people uh, on offices. So it depends on uh, concrete institution uh, in which colony you stay. So on the middle level or the here, here you have mujiki, like I don't know how to say it, guys or men folks or like usual men. Uh, it's a, as you can see it's a majority of popula population. Uh, there's a people who just go on work, who do not are not involved in any mafia activity try not to quarrel with administration, uh, with higher castes, and so on. So, the same as with uh, our so-called free society. And on the lower level of the caste, the so-called Pituhi, is translated like Cox. Uh, most generally, we can describe them as untouchables. So, it is the very bottom of the hierarchy. Uh, this caste is strongly uh, tied to homosexuality, but in fact, uh, those people are not homosexuals mostly. 
these are um, people who became uh, the so-called untouchables because of some ritual uh, actions, for example, for example, uh, like they were sometimes raped or they uh, like approved their homosexuality or they were having sex with their girls uh, in like an allowed uh, way and they told about it uh, to their friends and uh, this automatically moved them to, uh, to, uh, to the bottom of the hierarchy. So it's rather hard to explain but uh, this uh, cast is very similar to uh, ritual uncleanness in some religions, for example Judaism or or Zoroastrianism. So the main attribute of this caste is uh, you cannot have physical contact with these people. If you do, you uh, automatically fall, follow them and are removed to this caste. So uh, here you, uh, I brought some brochures uh, about this uh, caste. They are uh, in English, they are uh, on this table, where I very in a, in a very detailed way, I described uh, the living of this cat, the conditions in which they live, uh, the, how people can get to this cat, and so on. So, uh, life of these people completely is, is complete hell. They do not have rights at all. For example, if you are Mujib, you can uh, quarrel with something, you can respond when you are mocked or if you are humiliated. If you are pitu, you cannot. Uh, almost everyone can beat you. Sometimes you can uh, also be raped, uh, or you can be mocked or humiliated all the time, and you have no right to response. Uh, or if you will, you will be beaten heavily. And the very important feature that is that uh, caste division is strongly maintained by prison administration. If they want, they can. They could deal with it in a few weeks, in any institution, in any camps, but they do not. Why? Because, uh, as I have said previously, to maintain control inside the, this micro-society, you should divide it, first of all. And so they maintain this division where you have elites, you have common folks, and you have outcasts. Uh, and you even can see that in... Uh, any unit in penal colony or in any prison cell, uh, these Pituhi are mostly um, are mocked and humiliated much more by prison officers than by inmates. So, yeah, that's it. And the, the, also, the very, they are the very important feature of this caste, the lower caste, is that uh, this status has no escape. If you once become a Pituh, so, for example, you have been raped, or you have been uh, telling something about your private life, or you had some contact with uh, toilet, for example, you were cleaning the toilet, it's also, this uh, stuff is also forbidden for all the higher castes. So you automatically move to this caste, and you will never go out of it. Even after 10 years, 15 years, or even if you have been set free, and after 10 years you... Um, got in jail again, you still are in this caste. It has no escape. This is penal colony. So, at, uh, overwhelming majority of convicts uh, serve their terms here. Uh, this colony looks not like a prison with cells, but uh, as camp with barracks. It's organized in a more military way. Uh, it has a barrack system, and uh, the important thing in that is compulsory labor. You have to work. You have a question? Yeah, I wonder how do the guards and the prison administration um, let's say, how do you maintain. maintain these costs? How do they maintain yeah. it? As first, uh, first of all, they just let it exist. Uh, because officially, you have very strict. Uh, Penal rules, um, according to which, uh, which uh, like arranged all types of works, all types inside the camp, 
all types, all types of behavior of uh, prisoners, uh, all types of be of uh, connections between prisoners, relationships between free prisoners, prisoners and administration, and so on. And of course, this official rule uh, totally does not correspond in lots of uh, in lots of cases with informal hierarchy. But between informal hierarchy and official rules, administration uh, prefers informal rules, you know, uh, especially when uh, it is uh, good for administration. For example, some informal rules also um, imply kind of, um, kind of mutual, uh, mutual help, mutual, uh, okay, uh, it implies some good things for inmates also. Not uh, only the cruel hierarchy, but uh, unity against the cops, uh, unity against uh, uh, efforts of administration to make the regime more heavy and so on. But in this part of uh, informal rules are highly oppressed by administration. It tries, administration tries to remove it because this uh, is not good for administration, uh, it's not suitable for it. But if we speak about hierarchy which divides uh, inmates on castes and make the control easier, of course administration maintains it. So I can also uh, say that officers can mock those who, the guys from the lower castes, for example, like they maintain it while uh, while uh, humiliating, uh, for example, any guy from the lower caste uh, publicly, uh, on public, right? Uh, they use uh, slang words describing someone and so on. Uh, that's how they maintain this uh, caste system. Uh, next, so I spoke about the camps. So compulsory labor, labor is very important because uh, you have to go and work every day and work for eight or nine hours every day, including uh, Saturday. And if you do not, you go to punishment cell. I'll take it, I'll talk about it uh, later. And the highest violation of prison rules you can make is uh, to deny work, not to go for work. And to make Mujiki work, uh, administration uses lots of uh, tools, makes lots of efforts. Uh, they cannot, officers not, cannot only uh, put you into punishment cell, but also can ask uh, elites from the higher caste to talk to you and to persuade you. This persuasion is usually goes with violence, violence of course, so it looks like uh, in the morning you go to an officer and say, okay, I, cannot, I, I do not have a salary at all, I won't go to, to work. And he says, ah, okay. And then he calls someone from the higher castes and say, here, uh, you know, um, Vaisa or Vanya, uh, we have an inmate, who is an inmate who refuses to work. Deal with it. And he goes to you and beats you and say that you are Mujik, you are obliged to work. And you cannot just deny and do not go to work. So, and as for, as from my experience, it usually works. So as you can see, administration uses not only uh, formal, uh, legal, but also informal uh, tools of pressure on inmates. So also in penal colony, you have uh, some kind of cultural cultural life. Uh, for example, club, uh, movies, uh, and you can also, if you are in good relations with administration, you can also play music somewhere, uh, and so on. You have library, and yeah, that's it. Some libraries are not so bad, actually. Yeah. So, but you do not have uh, a lot of free time because administration does uh, as does their best <laughs> to deprive you of your free time. So here you see a uh, so-called punishment cell. So as, as I said before, uh, someone who is found guilty in violating criminal the laws serves his punishment term here. Uh, usually it looks like 
one barrack on the territory of the colony and uh, convict who is accused of, of violating prison law just goes here and sits here. The main thing is not uh, is that uh, while you are in punishment cell, you are deprived of all your personal belongings. You cannot have mattress, you have to sleep on the desks, uh, you uh, don't have uh, phone calls, uh, dates with your relatives, uh, you cannot make purchases in prison shop, you, can, uh, you do not have walk, uh, so everything is forbidden. You, don't have, you, you cannot take book with, your, with you and so on. Uh, with my experience, the most, the hardest thing uh, uh, in punishment cell is cold, because uh, the cells are really cold, and, and while during the day it is okay, more or less, uh, when you try to sleep at night, uh, you usually do not sleep more than 30 or 40 minutes, and then you wake up because of the cold, and you have to make exercises to warm yourself, and then you go to you sleep again and then you wake up and you have to make exercise and you just wait uh, for the morning uh, until the until you wake up uh, finally yeah it's very uh, it's very hard and so you are deprived of normal sleeping but in the same time you cannot sleep during the day when it is a bit warmer because sleeping during the day it is uh, it's forbidden it's also a violation of prison laws. Officially, the maximum term uh, which you can serve in a uh, punishment cell is 10 days. But law let, lets uh, officers leave you in punishment cell as much as they want. Uh, for example, I served maximum 20 days but I personally uh, know a guy who served uh, 180 days in such a cell, half a year, yeah, without uh, escaping for a single day. Uh, so it is done like, okay, you have 10 days here, but you violated some kind of prison law inside, for example, you have unbuttoned cord, uh, or your dress were not proper to the pattern, or you was quarreling with a guard or anything and they just prolong your term to 10 days and then 10 days more and more and more as and as much as they want but in the isolation cell do you work or you don't work? Uh, it depends, it depends from uh, what time of isolation cell is uh, you are sentenced to usually uh, you do not work because if you work during all the day, you can escape the punishment cell and you can, uh, when you are in the industrial zone, in a facility so-called, you can uh, drink tea, for example, uh, you, can, uh, you can get warmed, you know, you can communicate with other inmates and so on. And guards uh, administration do not want you uh, to be like this, and that's why they usually sentence you to uh, punishment uh, cell without going to work. Yeah. There was also a question: If you are ill, do you have to also work? Uh, no, if you are ill, uh, you should go to uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> infirmary. And you should have a paper that I am ill, I cannot work, but prison uh, doctors really are not looking forward to um, liberate you from job because uh, they have some kind of limitations. For example, they can only uh, um, liberate five or six people a day uh, from job and if they overcome this liberation, they will be punished somehow by administration. So, I have seen lots of uh, examples where people with a high temperature, for example, or who are really ill, they had to go to a job because a doctor didn't uh, give them uh, a document, a paper. The next stage is so-called uh, cell-type barrack. Uh, actually, this 
this cell is the same as the punishment cell, but the difference is that you stay here not for 10 days, but up to 6 months. And also you are allowed uh, to have more personal belongings with you. For example, you can uh, have mattress during the night, uh, you can have books, let you can write letters and so on. Uh, you also can have radio playing on the, on the corridor. Yes, but dates and phone calls with your relatives are also prohibited. So, uh, if you are still violating prison laws, if you are still trying to defend your rights uh, in the prison, even after you have been put in punishment cell and cell type barrack and pressured in other ways, so usually prison administration decides to move you to a so-called uh, prison regime. It's not a colony, but it's like a prison. So you serve your uh, the the next three years of your term in a prison in a cell. You have to be at least once in a cell type barrack to be moved to a prison regime. Uh, it is in this. Uh, Facility there are from 3 to 12 people in uh, the cell usually uh, and control uh, is executed by uh, Blatny for professional criminals and their, uh, and their informal prison laws called Paniatia. And in order to uh, maintain the control inside the prison, administration gives some privileges to Blatny, for example they can have additional prison calls they can have food parcels, they can move freely inside the prison from cell to cell, which is strongly prohibited uh, by the uh, prison laws. Uh, they sometimes even have cell phones, uh, sometimes uh, they can have dates with relatives and so on, so on. The important characteristics of prison regime is a very strict uh, inner regime. Uh, for example, walk is one hour a day, uh, you have only short-term uh, dates with your relatives. For example, I had only one uh, date in a year. Uh, and through the glass wire, uh, you like just uh, to take the phone and speak with your relative uh, through the glass. And food parcels are almost forbidden. And uh, you can buy products uh, in a food uh, in a prison shop uh, on a, about 10 euro a month and they can uh, bring you to a prison regime to a term up to three years. I served two and a half years in such a uh, facility and I can say that uh, the main punishment inside it is not only the strict regime or bad conditions but very uh, heavy psychological atmosphere inside it. Because imagine you have to stay in a prison cell with the same people for years uh, and you, your life is totally um, ruled by this informal panatia and you have to be very careful about speaking on any, t on any themes, on any issues because you can be punished informally for any wrong word uh, you can, so you can have problems, uh, lots of problems with Blatnia very easily. For example, I knew lots of uh, examples when people uh, in the one cell, just one of them was speaking uh, some bad things about Blatnia, about prison leads, and he, his, uh, he, the, the guy he was speaking to was a snitch, and he informed Blatny about what did he said, and this the other white guy was just heavily beaten. And there is absolutely usual thing for a prison regime. So administration and Blatny are cooperating very uh, tightly with each other in order to uh, keep the things under control, not to have unexpected uh, riots, not to have uh, inmates fighting for their rights and so on. And as a result, uh, you have lots of suicides in such type of prisons uh, and even killings. For example, in 2012 we have an 
um, such a case that in one cell three guys were together and they decided to play uh, dominoes and the stake was uh, life. So after one of the guys lost, uh, the next day winner suffocated the loser and left the body uh, on the bed. Yeah, and the third guy was just uh, keeping his legs from moving. Yeah, and the, the one who was a murderer was uh, sentenced to a death penalty and executed soon. And the one who was uh, uh, holding the legs uh, was sentenced to additional 15 years. Yeah. So, and I uh, also was informed about some uh, suicides uh, during this two and a half year when I was here and lots of attempts to suicide also. Yeah. Do Black also work like everyone else? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, they should work, actually. And I can say properly that 10 years ago they never worked. They never went to work. Because uh, criminal law uh, forbids them to work. Uh, but nowadays uh, the prison administration advanced a lot in imposing their own rules, even on Blatnia. And most of Blatnia go to an industrial zone, go to a industrial facilities, and actually they do not work, but they go there. They pretend to be working, but they do not, of course. So, but they force other inmates to work. And for those uh, who were not corrected by the uh, previous stages such as prison regime and punishment cell and so on. Uh, there is a very special article in Criminal Court of Republic of Belarus, article number 411. Uh, it allows prison administration uh, to keep prisoner in the uh, colony or in the prison as long as they want. Literally no limit. Uh, it may be used for at least four violation, violations of regime. Uh, usually it is systematic refusions to follow the demands of administration. For example, uh, they force you, they tell you to clean a toilet, but you cannot do that because you will be automatically moved to a lower caste, the low caste, caste of Pituhi. And of course you do not want uh, to be there. And you say, no, I will not clean the toilet. But according to formal legal rules, you have to, you must. And they say, okay, so we'll write a paper, a document that you are refusing. And you go to punishment cell once, then twice, then four times. And they just, then they just start criminal case against you. And you can be sentenced to uh, up to one year in prison, according to first point of an article and to one, two years according, according to the second uh, point. I was sentenced uh, to one year and it happened uh, three days before I should be uh, set free. Yeah, it was a special uh, trial inside the prison. Yeah, they attempted to uh, make it public. They collected all the kazli, so guys who are working for administration, and uh, like usual workers such as uh, like cleaners and so on, so on and they uh, wanted to show them that look what will happen with you on my example if you will not be obedient if you will not follow the prison rules yeah so i use this opportunity to speak on public and uh, made a political speech about kgb about uh, prison rules and system and so on and yeah because we like, and the main feature is this: is that this article can be applied unlimited number of times. So I know a few cases uh, when convict went to prison with a primary uh, term of uh, three years, and had been set free only after seven years. Yeah. So I think that's it.
you can ask questions if you have. I would like to ask about the kind of rebellious attitude, or if there is like uh, people that are kind of I don't know organizing some sort of like what what types of resistance did you come across uh, from the from the inmates, mm -hmm. and if it's um, because like in, in in Polish prison system in theory this kind of higher caste it's there to fight the administration. And uh, they are organized uh, in this way for for this reason. Primarily, of course, it's it's kind of serving the, the administration as well, mm -hmm. yeah. maintaining this hierarchy. It serves it. But uh, I was wondering if this has anything to do, like in the in the Belarusian system, mm -hmm. if there is some, something like that, or I don't know. Originally, according to, according to original Panatia informal rules. Yes, the higher caste is supposed to be to, not only to organize themselves, but organize all the inmates for fighting the administration, for fighting their rights, and so on. And it happened sometimes uh, before, 12, uh, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and so on. But nowadays, this caste is totally under control of administration. If, uh, like, sometimes, very rarely, uh, pops up a guy who is not controlled by administration, but no, who is not controlled by administration, who tries to push his own rules and fight the administration, they get rid of him very fastly. They just start the criminal case against him and put him towards uh, to uh, some other penal colony or like try to break him uh, in by any means. Uh, and they usually have success in that. Yeah, of, of, okay, we have some uh, prison regime uh, jail for the, where there are some cells where such unbroken uh, Blotnia are sitting, but they are very, very tiny minority, minority from the overall uh, higher caste. And I can say that nowadays the most uh, rebellious attitudes comes, comes from uh, Mujiki, usual guys, who want to fight the, who tries to find the, uh, fight the prison administration uh, and spend lots of time in punishment cell. And <coughs> while you are in uh, colony, you will very rarely see any attempts to fight their rights. All the attempts to uh, confront the administration I met were in punishment cell or cell type barracks and sometimes in uh, prison regime by, but uh, what if to speak about what near the higher caste if they start fighting uh, administration they do it only to get privileges for themselves not for Mujiki, not for majority so it's much easier for them to um, communicate with administration to make negotiations than uh, make confrontation and I have another question. In villages of your own caste, there is uh, no nobody fighting for petuki. Yes. Or is there pet, uh, petuki that are like also uh, putting up some resistance against the condition? Uh, they do not put up organized resistance. Some individual acts, yes, but they are so highly oppressed. You know, they are like reduced. Their condition reduced to total slavery. They cannot say a word. Uh, they like do not have rights. And usually, if they try to do something, they just um, ask their relatives, who has relatives, those of them who have relatives, uh, to write a petition to some uh, official institution, uh, to some le legislative uh, body, and so on. And yeah, they do not uh, perform organized resistance and nobody fights for them actually. But, of course, if to speak fairly, administration tries to um, avoid the very <coughs> brutal uh, like suppression of Pituhi because they understand that, okay, if someone would beat this concrete Pituh every day, he might hang up someday. And administration do not want a suicide inside the colony and they will try to avoid it somehow. For example, take this uh, Pituh guy and just sell him to a uh, self-type barrack, like, s serve your term here, or in a 
uh, solitary confinement where nobody will beat you and so on. That's how they decide problems, if you can call it standing for their rights. <coughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Do you know uh, if anything about uh, how the situation looks in women prisons in, in Belarus? In what? Women prisons. And if there is uh, a caste system similar to this one, or do you know anything at all about that? Yeah, I know some facts. Not, not, not actually very precisely, but uh, while moving from prison to prison, you move in a train. And your cell, if your cell is close to a woman's cell, you can speak with them and uh, gain some information. Uh, yeah, some differences. For example, they are not such caste as uh, Pituhi in women's prison. Uh, there are some girls or women who uh, are like sexual um, employers or employees who work for, for sexual workers. yeah sexual workers uh, who but they are not untouchables you can have physical contact with them and it's okay for example cleaning toilets is also okay you will not uh, be removed to a lower caste with it and as far as i know there are not much attempts to uh, to organize resistance and the caste of botnia do not exist most probably, uh, that everything is decided by Kazli, it uh, means uh, by the caste which is appointed by administration. So that's the only differences I know more or less precisely. And they are called uh, also Kazli? <laughs> Maybe Kazli here, I don't know <laughs> how, how the community sounds. <laughs> Maybe, uh, if, I mean, I, I read your article, so I know that this, uh, this caste system is also used against political prisoners. Can mm. you say something more about it? Yeah, of course. It's a very good question that you mentioned it. Uh, when uh, the massive riot on uh, Minsk streets happened in December 2010. Lots of political prisoners moved uh, to a prison, and those of them who were the most uh, public persons, who were uh, the most media persons, they were like attacked with these informal prison rules. Uh, it was I won't mention them. I think it doesn't matter a lot. But uh, when they moved to a strictly to colonies. Uh, things like that, ha things happened like that, uh, a very, a very uh, high-ranked casual moved to him and said, hey, hello, uh, you know, we have heard that you were, uh, you were friends, you, you, was, you, you were friends with uh, some faggot on, a, it means gay, uh, on a, in your previous life, and you were drinking tea with him, and uh, you were like uh, hugging with him, and so on. And here is three, or two or three inmates. He says, "Yes, yes, we also have seen that, but it's impossible. They never seen him before. That's just totally falsificated case, right?" But it because all says, "Okay, so but it happened, and now you move move to a lower caste, and of course uh, this political prisoner can do nothing." just to demand administration to be put into a punishment cell, just to be totally isolated uh, from the whole massive of inmates, because if you have some dignity, some, uh, like, yes, some your own dignity, you cannot stay between uh, among uh, usual inmates, common inmates, if you are P2, because you'll be mocked and uh, humiliated every day, all day long, and so on. Yes, and... Oh, I know another case where some uh, political prisoner was in penal colony for three or four months and he, everything was more or less okay until he started to write uh, petitions, uh, letters to uh, um, state institutions where he tell that uh, I don't like the regime, they not, uh, do not correspond to our legal rules 
and everything is bad and blah 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 and then administration decide okay if he is so smart if he wants to find the right we'll just make him to talk and he can do nothing and they uh, asked Botnir to falsificate the case against him and they came to him and say and said you know we have seen you drinking from cup of pitu with uh, from from the same cup uh, from which Pitu drinks and of course it was not true but uh, here are three or four evidence who said yes yes we also have seen that we also have seen that and he just moved to this lower caste yeah that's how it happened and I know at least three cases uh, when this happened so uh, KGB officers who control the political prisoners uh, decide that uh, prison regime is not enough to pressure the prisoners. They also uh, need to make informal pressure to totally destroy the personality and to uh, destroy the personal dignity of the person. And yeah, that's it. So. I have a question if it is always successful to put someone in the lower caste. If there is a, a way to, for example, to show solidarity with people that are kind of on this trial, this informal trial or this informal push, or if nobody is like uh, trying to mix with that. For example, if the administration decides that somebody uh, will be like, we want this person to go in this lower caste, is there any uh, like cases known to you that people stand and defend the person? No or cases. Somehow? No one wants to mix with that, first of all. And if cops decided you to move you to the sky, they will do it so or later. They can just, uh, the easiest way, they can just call any pituch and give them the pack of cigarettes and say, go kiss him. Or give him your cap, cap put for example, uh, organize it somehow, like say that you are not Pitu, and say, oh, come on, let's drink some tea. And you, and he drinks tea with him for, from the same cup, and here you are. So there are millions of ways to, to move a uh, person to this cast, and no ways to move out of it. So yeah, if administration decides, there are no escape at all. I, I never seen about such uh, uh, like cases, but According to some legends uh, tied to Panyatya, linked to Panyatya, uh, you can uh, go out of this caste by killing those who uh, moved you to this caste, who have put you here. But I have never heard that it ever happened in practice. You said that the Pituk are uh, untouchable, <coughs> and uh, you also. Uh, spoke about uh, some physical violence, like uh, beating or raping. Maybe it's explaining in your paper, but I, I don't uh, read it uh, for the moment. I'll do it later. Yeah. But uh, is it the 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 middle class which is uh, which is beating the uh, the peto, for example? What happened? They are touching him or raping him. Like. Uh. Yes, I understand the question. The uh, physical contact is prohibited except uh, beating, but beating can be exec is executed usually by legs, you can beat them by legs, by hands no, okay, by legs it's okay, or by some uh, tools for example, uh, yeah, by, every, by a stick or something like that. And uh, sexual contact is also okay, because uh, if you rape someone, it is like okay, uh, if, you, if you are raped, so you are homosexual, faggot and so on. <laughs> So it is not a case. So if you are, for example, performing passive sexual contact, you are going to a lower caste. If you perform an active sexual contact, it's okay. And I can, uh, I should also add that here, uh, there are sometimes even cases where people go to Pituhi uh, by their own decision uh, because they do not uh, have what to, cigarettes to smoke and tea to drink. Uh, and so on, and while they are doing sexual work, they are given some cigarettes and tea. Yeah, that happens. And, uh, is there any uh, 
criticism of this caste system from outside of, of the prison? Is it something that is known or it's really a hidden culture? Uh, the only who raise this question are human rights defenders sometimes and also uh, from the last few years anarchists who escaped, the, uh, who, who came out of the prisons. Mm -hmm. But uh, formally, when relatives of uh, prisoners come to uh, officials outside the prisons and say that here we know such a problem, what is happening, what the fuck, this is uh, some kind of medieval caste system, and what is going on, where is the law, and blah blah blah, they just say, oh, we don't know about this, everything is according to law, nothing happens, it's all uh, false. So uh, inmates align, everything is okay. I wanted to ask you a, a bit more personally about like the signs of solidarity from outside, if you experience it, and how it uh, change your situation in prison. Like, uh, did, did, did it have effect on different, like, did it have effect on uh, administration relations with you, other prisoners relations with you? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. Yes, the signs of solidarity are very, very important. They were crucially important because when you uh, gain hundreds of uh, letters, of postcards, uh, and you know that action, actions of solidarity are performed outside the prison, so of course you are encouraged by it and all the, uh, all the things are getting easier. You know, it's, it's much easier to go through all these uh, sufferings. And what about administration? The paradox is that the more strong solidarity was, the more pressure I gained from the administration. Because before we were acknowledged by uh, human rights defenders as political prisoners, uh, administration almost uh, haven't seen me. They just Okay, some Nicola the dog, and we don't mind about him. But when they read on the internet that okay, this guy was acknowledged as a political prisoner, they tried to started to pressure me higher and higher. I think it was not their decision because all the decisions uh, concerning political prisoners are made outside the prison in KGB by KGB officers, and uh, most probably they said okay, if he thinks. He considers himself uh, such a hero, such a fighter, let him suffer. And they start to pressure you uh, higher and higher. And about other inmates, you know, I never met a bad attitude towards me from the common inmates. Their attitude was hesitating from uh, total appreciating to neutral. neutral. And I even sometimes uh, met uh, guys who helped me just because I'm a political prisoner. They were not, they did know nothing about anarchism or even democracy, such a high definition, uh, such a wide definition of democracy or fighting for their rights or blah blah blah. They just know that okay, he's got, this guy is fighting against Lukashenko. He's a good guy and. Uh, let's help, let's help him somehow. Yeah, and they made some signs of solidarity, helped me uh, by giving some, I don't know, food or chocolate or just informing me about something which is happening. Uh, yeah, and so on. Even some Kazli did that, even uh, sometimes Blotnia did that, very rarely, but it happened. Uh, of course, they did it until they were not pressured by administration for helping me, but it happened, actually. <coughs> Yes. Question is, what is the percentage of black in the prison? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll say about percentage of all the castes. So, Blotnia never, uh, usually never live in a colony. Blotnia live or in prison regime, a prison, or in a punishment cell or or cell type barrier. Because even if they are totally controlled, administration does not, uh, it, 
does not interested in uh, being them in uh, colony. In some, it depends from colony actually. In some uh, colonies, uh, administration keeps botnik inside the camp to maintain control. In some colonies, administration keeps botnik in uh, punishment cell to keep the control in this barrack, in this separate barrack, you know. So they even are allowed to go to this country cell and beat someone who they want to. And in some uh, colonies, administration just decide not to have a headache and move all the botnia to a prison regime. Uh, percent botnia in uh, prison where I was was about 10%. And Kazli is about five or seven percent, and Pituhi are about three or five percent. For example, in a colony which was uh, which had about one hundred fifty, uh, one hundred one and a half thousand people, one and a half thousand people, there were forty Pituhi. Yeah. So that's it. A question. Uh, can a uh, violent con uh, conflict uh, mm, mm, be expected when you meet uh, a nationalist or Nazi uh, in your prison cell or in your mm, part of the colony? How does it look like? Or rather, is it like we are in prison here, we are like, against the regime and we don't fight each other here? Is it a danger there? or? What is the situation? Yeah, I'd say there are lots of right-wing hooligans and uh, neo-Nazis in Pelham colonies. Uh, they do not position themselves as neo-Nazis inside the prison. First of all, because there are lots of uh, ethnic minorities here, and sometimes they are quite strong, uh, quite uh, strong, and yeah, and they do not position them themselves as political uh, prisoners and they do not have solidarity from their comrades at all and I met some uh, right-wing hooligans let's say and I always said them that I'm anarchist, I'm anti-fascist and that's it and nothing happened and I also have not attacked them because I have not seen any ag aggressiveness from them and I just didn't have a point of doing that. They are not if you even an, is an anti-fascist, you do not have any uh, dangerous coming from these neo-Nazis inside the prison because no one wants to fight because the first the fighting leads you uh, unavoidably to a punishment cell. And no one wants to go to a punishment cell because of uh, beating uh, each other. And Nazi never inside the prison never express their Nazi attitude. They will never beat. Uh, gypsy guy or Caucasian guy or Jew guy, they, the maximum they can express is speaking racist thing with someone else, uh, the, the other Nazi, somewhere in the corner. You know? so. could, you, could you say something more about uh, ethnic minorities in general? How many uh, people are they and where from and are there like, do they keep together mm -hmm. in any way? Uh, yes, uh, the first place uh, on amount uh, are Russians, I'd say, but they not keep together at all. They do not form any diaspora, uh, they, they are not organized. The second play, uh, place are most probably gypsy uh, people, and it depends from colonies. In some colonies, they are very organized. They meet eat, uh, they meet each uh, each week, drink tea together, and spend time together, and like, stand for each other. But administration is very always very aggressive about any organized group inside the prison. It doesn't depend on other ethnic minor minorities or religious minorities. They try to divide them by any means. And there are also some Caucasians, but the other important point are the religious minorities. Uh, I met uh, organized group of Protestants uh, and organized group of uh, Muslims, and in some colonies there are uh, also 
I don't know how to translate the evidences of ego. Witnesses, yeah, witnesses of ego in some colonies and Krishnaids. But uh, the strongest and the biggest one is, I'd say, the Protestant. And in the last colony where I was, they were strongly suppressed by the colony administration. They were put in the punishment cell all the time, just for nothing, just because they're Protestants, uh, to a cell, to cell type barracks. And uh, they were really organized in terms that they were helping each other, sharing food or sharing some personal belongings with each other. Uh, and they refused to be a snitches uh, to inform the prison administration. And yeah, they made, I'd say, a good uh, impression on me. And I tried to uh, keep a, a contact with them. But soon I went to a cell type barrack myself. So <coughs> not very successful. I have a question about the like the history of rebellions in Belarusian prison. If there is like in prison system in general, if uh, if it's common that people like uh, make mutinies or some stronger acts of resistance in the recent history, if you could recall. The last strongest act of resistance was in the beginning of 2000s, where uh, in one of the colony where I was actually uh, inmates were rioting and they broke uh, fences between barracks. I don't know what they have demanded but I know that uh, administration moved the armored vehicles inside the prison yeah, and it finished quite bad. But uh, during my uh, presence in prisons yeah, there were such riots as for example, most of the riots, almost all of the riots were only in a barracks, separate barrack, uh, cell type barrack, you know, in punishment cells and so on. Because those who are deprived of everything, they are more likely to riot than those who are in the colony, in the camp. So, yeah, and the riots was like, were like uh, knocking on the doors very loudly, all together. Uh, breaking the uh, breaking the furniture inside the cells, uh, beating the glasses, uh, and refusing to take refusing to, to to take food, and turning all the water all together, and then when it goes to a uh, to a guards now to a corridor where the guards are walking. And so on. Yeah, there were several such riots, and sometimes they also cutting themselves with the razor blades. It happens rather often. Uh, the individual cuttings happen really often. I can uh, assume that while we are speaking here, almost every day, uh, somewhere in Belarusian prison or cell type barrack or somewhere else someone cuts his veins. It happens almost every day, uh, if we take all the prison system. But collective cuttings happen uh, not so often, but they do. And once you got out of the prison, um, did your perception change of the hierarchies, how they exist in society? Say, how did you, how did you feel when you got, got out um, about hierarchy, how it is organized in better society? Are there any similarities or does it work on a completely different uh, Yeah, it's a <coughs> complex philosophical question. But let me say that in prison I saw everything that I have uh, seen outside, but just in a more concentrated way. And that's it. No uh, crucial, di crucial differences. Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, when we talk about the cuttings and these forms of rebellion, I was wondering uh, one thing, if there is also people swallowing things. Yeah. And, um, and another uh, uh, question was about the hunger strikes, if it's, if it's a common tactics for people fighting for uh, some, some rights, or, and also uh, uh, the relation of this uh, sort of strategies to this like lowest caste. So like the, the caste system actually, how does it place? If it's still this uh, sort of Mujiki caste that it's uh, um, mostly uh, 
with this sort of tactics, or also like you have also Petuki uh, doing performing such a resistant things, mm -hmm. or or the higher class? Uh, no, let's say that most of uh, self damaging are made by Mujiki and Petuki, mm -hmm. and uh, almost all of them are individual, the same as hunger strikes. Uh, it's you not see very often when. Uh, Pituhi and Mujiki make collective hunger strikes. Yeah, just because administration work really smartly, uh, in a really smart way to divide the prisoners by any means. Yes, and uh, also I've seen guys swallowing things or taking uh, nails and putting in inside yourself and so on. Yeah, I have a question about the trust between the inmates. I was wondering if you felt the need when you arrived to be secretive about the reason uh, what you've done or the reason why you got arrested and, and, and jailed. And if, uh, or if not, like you can be totally open about your political views or like, is there some affinity that are created based on political views between prisoners? How does it work, this, this trust? Uh, first of all, I should say that while you are in prison, you cannot trust anyone. It's very rarely when you can uh, trust some people or make some affinity groups, and you have to be very extremely uh, careful while doing that, because snitches are really everywhere, and I can say for sure that uh, among 10 people which you have a uh, relation is with inside a barrack, for example, six of them will be snitches. They will be informing the officer about what you what you just told and uh, speaking and so on. But when I came to prison, uh, I never uh, hided my political identity, and I all the time said that I'm a political prisoner and so on. And when I was asked like, what party are you belong to, I should, needed to say that. Okay, I'm an anarchist, and that's it. Uh, and but also, I should mention that it's almost impossible to hide what are you serving term for, because sooner or later it, it will just go outside somehow. And that uh, that's why uh, some rapists who are not very uh, welcomed, let's say, in uh, prisons, they always get in trouble in that because they try to go inside a cell or to a barrack and they try to conceal that they are rapists of pedophiles for example mm -hmm. and they have very big troubles usually because of that. Yes. Ah, uh, for political prisoners it's impossible. Uh, by any means, they will administration and K, let's say KGB and the administration will make that uh, you will have lots of violations of prison rules and while you have at least one, uh, you will never go out earlier. But actually I was, uh, has been set free earlier, not because of amnesty or anything, but by, but by the uh, order signed by Lukashenko uh, that all these guys are released, me and five more political prisoners. But it happened not because of the law, not because of the amnesty, but because of external pressure of uh, foreign diplomacy, uh, of European states, and also because of internal pressure of my comrades and human rights defenders and so on. Yeah. So, and make you so-called violator of prison laws is very very easy for administration because the prison rules themselves are so strict that they cannot be conducted on 100% and they are del uh, deliberately made in a same way in, in a way that um, any inmate in any second can be accused in violation them. for example you had dirty shoes or your uh, dress is not properly uh, dressed or you have not told proper greeting to an officer and so on. So it's very easy to make a paper uh, an, a, against you that you violated the law, blah blah blah, go to punishment. So. Where are the 
um, these these colonies located? Are some are some of them actually, you know, still in, in, in place? Are they outside of the city or in the city? Usually, are there sometimes places that formerly gulags were, you know? I, I wonder. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I also do not know the principle according to which they are disseminated, but uh, usually they are outside the cities, uh, just a few kilometers from the small cities. Uh, only few colonies are near the big cities. Usually they are just 10-15 kilometers from the minor cities, towns. Uh, sorry, uh, lots of colonies are former military camps, actually. Question is if there is any TV or internet access in the cells? Uh, no internet at all. Uh, while you are in colony, you have TV, one TV set for a whole barrack, for around 100 people. <laughs> so in some colonies, I'd say in most colonies nowadays you have also DVD. And Kazol or Blotnoy is decided what we is decided what we'll watch to watch today. <laughs> and uh, almost or even not maybe almost in all the colonies you even have internal TV. So every day Kazli make a broadcast, uh, make some even shows uh, somewhere in the club, they uh, preparing these shows. And for example, in one of the colonies where I was, every week you had a kind of broadcast where you can see all the prison law, all the law violators who went to a punishment cell this week with their photos, with describing what have they done. Uh, yeah, and it's <laughs> look really weird and funny. But also, you can go if you are in a good relations with this casual, you can go to him and. Um, Purchase a uh, congratulations uh, for to do your friend with a uh, day of birth, for example, or with a new year, and the Kazov will read to a whole the colony that I congratulate Vanya from a second unit with his birthday, and I mm. wish him the best luck. <laughs> <laughs> a few minutes ago, uh, you said uh, that you cannot uh, trust anyone. And, uh, uh, the whole prison is full of snitches, but uh, before uh, you said like uh, in, in some minorities people uh, are really keeping together do uh, have impression that this uh, infiltration is as strong among them or uh, or just not or they are just resisting infiltration. Believe me that if they uh, are strongly tied with each other, it doesn't mean they are not snitches. They can be best friend and they can be both snitches and telling the officer what they're speaking uh, to each other separately. The one is going to officer and tells everything and the next day the other goes to officer and tells uh, everything. So yeah, it does not like, uh, like it can be together, you know. Which advantage do you have to be a switch? Uh, the first and the most important one is uh, preterm uh, liberation, so they can make you according to doc documents everything, and you can go home earlier before you serve uh, the full term. The other one, you can be allowed to get uh, food parcels, days with relatives, and additional phone calls, and so on, so on, and. It depends from your status in hierarchy. If you are a Kazol, some of the Kazli are really very important persons in prison. For example, each of the high uh, administrative uh, officers have his own servant, Kazol, who is making tea for him, uh, I don't know, washing his clothes, uh, and he's like his own servant. And sometimes his servant is more influential than the common officer in prison, you know? So, well, he's inmate, but he, uh, but the common uh, prison guard afraid of him because this servant can go to a uh, chief of the colony and something, and uh, the guard will be punished, for example. And yeah, they, for, just imagine that some people are uh, staying in the jail for 10, 15, or even 20 years, and 
this officer sees this inmate uh, more often than his wife, for example, and mm. they know each other in a very, very good, like totally, they know all the characteristics of each other. And uh, it's a really a good point for officer to make him his agent, who um, will help him in treason against his colleagues, who will, can help him to uh, know everything that is happening inside the inmate circle and so on. So this hierarchy is really complex. Uh, as I've said before, you can have inmates who is higher uh, in hierarchy than uh, official, uh, than official than common guards. For example, I know uh, from the the personal servant of chief of the colony was allowed to do everything. He can went to uh, uh, dates with his relatives as long as he wants, almost for weeks. You know, he could stay in the uh, in the separate rooms. He could get uh, food parcels as much as he wanted. He could move towards uh, through all the colony without any uh, permissions, without any confinements, and so on. He had one million of privileges. So, and it was an inmate. Let's say uh, it's better to ask this question uh, from people who are around me, from my friends, from my relatives, because it's quite uh, hard for me to evaluate by myself. And I just can say that not all the changes were a negative. There were also some positive changes. Uh, yeah, but it's really hard to evaluate and to tell you the top because it's a philosophical question and it needs lots of self-reflection and so on. Is there a death sentence in the notes and how is it conducted? Death sentence? Death penalty. Ah, yeah. And uh, the second part, uh, so uh, how is it conducted? Uh, it's conducted by shooting, and we usually have between one or three uh, death sentences each year. Uh, until uh, 1999, we had much more, uh, between 40 and 50 death sentences each year, but from 2000, uh, we started to have less and less of them. And Yes, but now there were a few death sentences just a, a few weeks ago conducted in Belarus, yeah, and they are highly uh, described in mass media and everywhere. And is there any case of political prisoner who got the death sentence? Fortunately not, yes. Can you repeat some question? Is there any case of political prisoner who got the death sentence? No, not yet. Questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.